Blessed, most merciful Heavenly Father, Lord, I come before you humbly, Lord, and I beg and I plead, Lord, to give me the courage, the will, the words, the wisdom to speak, what you put in my heart to speak. And I pray all this in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen. Amen and amen. I am only the dust of the earth, and no one is beneath me. And the only thing that's special about me is that I am forgiven, and I am God's dirt. Uh, this time, I did not have a dream. This actually, this actually happened to me. One day in early 2018, I had a cup of coffee, and I had a rice cake. And I took maybe three or four bites out of it on my way back to my bedroom. Now, if you're not familiar with a rice cake, they are about the size of a, of a CD, and they're about an inch thick, and they're made of puffed rice, and they're very light and airy and almost no calories. And that's why a lot of people like them. I went into my bedroom, and I sat on the side of my bed near my little end table, and I placed the cup of coffee in the corner of my end table. Uh, that was closest to me. Uh, but then there was no place to put the rice cake. So I placed it on top of the cup of coffee, which covered most of the top of the cup. And I stood up, and I literally stared at the cup of coffee, at the rice cake, for a moment to make sure that it would stay put. Now, I don't know why I did that, but I did. I stood up, I retrieved my keys from my pocket, and I decided to put them in my dresser drawer to be more comfortable. I turned and I took three steps to my dresser. I opened the drawer and I placed the keys in my top dresser drawer and I closed the drawer. I turned around and I immediately noticed something was different. Something was missing. My rice cake, it was gone. The cup of coffee was still there, but the rice cake was totally gone. The rice cake had disappeared as, as in vanished into thin air. Now I looked on the table I looked on the bed, I looked on the floor, I looked under the table, I looked behind the lamp on top of the table, I looked under the covers, I looked everywhere, but no rice cake. Now this was truly shaking me up and I was determined to find that missing rice cake. I was almost in a panic to find that missing rice cake and I am thinking a rice cake simply cannot disappear. This was too weird, this kind of thing does not happen to me. I looked again under the bed, I looked in the bed, I looked through the covers, I looked under the table, I looked in the same places over and over, I looked everywhere, but then finally, finally, I found the missing rice cake, and it was in the trash can. But how did it get there? Now was the fact that it was in the trash can, was that a, a message in itself to me? Now I, I took a tape measure and I measured the top of the trash can to the bottom of the cup of coffee and it was 12 inches below the cup of coffee. The trash can was offset to the side of the coffee cup by about 12 inches as well. I know because I measured it with a tape measure. So how did the rice cake move 12 inches to the right and then 12 inches down into the trash can? There was nothing the rice cake could have hit and bounced over into the trash can as it was on the edge of the table. How? Would it get up off the top of the cup of coffee and over to the trash can? Ow! It could not roll because it was partially eaten. and it, So it, it couldn't roll. It was not possible for the heat of the coffee to build up pressure into the rice cake laying on top of the cup of coffee as the rice cake was partially eaten. And there was no way for that to happen. There was no fan. The heat and air vent did not kick on. The only animal in my room was a sleeping cat at the foot of the bed, and which never woke up during all of this. I repeated my steps, and it all took about four or five seconds, is all I had my back turned. I was, I was truly shocked and confused. I didn't know whether to feel blessed or if I should feel terrified over this. I prayed, and I prayed hard over this because it, it really shook me. This incident shook me to my very core, and it terrified me even possibly thinking that this was something demonic, which that even frightened me more. I was not sure if I should feel blessed or terrified of, over something being, being moved in my room. Uh, in, in only a few seconds while my back was turned. Now I had been shaken before by God, but not like this. 
and for something to be moved in my room and then placed in a trash can, was God trying to tell me something? But what? I have learned over the years that God always likes to impress me with different ways that he will talk to me, give me messages and dreams, but this time, this was over the top. We were still going to a church at that time and I talked to a couple pastors and they could, uh, could not offer me anything uh, other than just to pray on this. And I talked to several of my friends and they could not offer me anything biblical on what had just happened to me. And they told me to pray on it as well. So I prayed. I got on my knees and I prayed. I prayed very hard for, on this. For three days I prayed hard on this. And finally the Holy Spirit revealed to me. Not all things are safe to eat now. I was also told that now it is more important than ever to say the blessing over every meal we eat. Satan cannot stay in or live in anything that is blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Evil men have been tampering with our food for years, contaminating our food, adding germs, bacteria, exotic chemicals, even blood, DNA, HEK-293, and GMOs to everything we eat, we drink, the very air we breathe, and even the, if the package says GMO free, they lie, and you can still not trust them. Our food is so bad that in, in uh, many countries, our foods are illegal in foreign countries around the world, and that is how contaminated our food and drinks are. No, I did not finish eating the rice cake. I went and I threw the rest of it uh, into the trash, and I threw the rest of the package of rice cakes that I had, I threw them in the trash as well. And since then, I have never eaten another rice cake. Now, this was a popular, well-known brand, part of a huge conglomeration. And I learned that everything this popular conglomeration makes is tainted with HEK-293 and other things as well. Remember, buyer beware. Now, if you want more information on this, you need to visit my website. You can find more information on this. Now, if Satan can do a thing, he will do the thing, especially if it harms people. So the next step for these people is to uh, include DNA from Nephilim into our food, drinks, and medications to try to alter our DNA. Now, if you remember, this was attempted at another time in history before the Great Flood. Satan's plan was to corrupt the DNA of every human on the planet. By doing so, then Mary, the mother of Jesus, would have ended up with corrupted DNA, and then Jesus could never have been born into a corrupted gene pool. Genesis 6, 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. Matthew 24, 22. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. God destroyed the earth before with a flood for the very same sin that we are doing today. And God, and God will destroy the earth again, but this time with fire. As it is written, it will be done. Satan is running to and fro in these last days because he knows his time grows short. And the Holy Spirit told me, now it is more important than ever to say the blessing over every meal. Satan cannot live in or stay in anything blessed in Jesus' name. Yes, there is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. So use that power and bless your food and your drinks. Be safe. Bless your food in Jesus' name. Remember, trust God. God bless you. God keep you. God make his face shine upon you and give you peace. You are all in our prayers, every one of you. Every one of you have been a blessing to us in this ministry. And every day we thank God for sending you to us. Please say the blessing. And please repent of sin every time you pray, as these days sin is in everything and everywhere, just like the days of Noah. And Satan has taken over the church, and even, even introduced perverted fake Bibles into these perverted churches. Be wise as serpents, and gentle as doves. My prayer is God use me, shape me like the clay on the potter's wheel, into any shape that is pleasing to you, Lord. And all I ask is that you fill my cup to overflowing with your spirit. And this should be all of our prayers.
God bless you, and God keep you in his loving arms, just like he held me. With much love and more grace from above. Amen. We're going home soon. Time is so short. Time is so short. Are you watching the news? Are you watching the news? Are, are you seeing what's going on in our society? There's troops on the streets in New York City. People just run into stores and steal what they need and run out the door. People, it, it, people are going mad. Nations are going mad. Just like it says in the Bible, in the last days, people, the nations will, run, will go mad. Those days are here. Those days are here. And Jesus says, when you see all these things come about, look up for your redemption draweth nigh. So we're going home soon. Be in prayer. Repent of sin. Get, get closer to God. Get right with God. Get your house in order. Because we fly soon. We fly very soon. And this eclipse is just one more sign from God that our time is so very, very short. We pray for every one of you. We pray that you be in, in God's will and grace and be ready to go. Be ready to go. We love you also very much. God bless each and every one of you. And we keep all of you in our prayers. And we love you so very much.